Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Novelist Unwind. I'm Johnny Alexander. So good to be with you again. And I'm excited to have Liz Tolzma as our guest today. Liz writes World War II stories and also prairie romances uh, for Barber's novella collection. And we're here to talk today about her newest release, which I think just released. So we're really excited about celebrating that with her and about her writing journey and, you know, just all that kind of fun stuff. So Liz, tell us about this about this new book. What are we celebrating? We are celebrating the release, and you're right, it was just last week on January 16th that the Melody of the Soul released. Yeah. And this is the copy of the book, the cover, which they did an amazing job on. I think it it's just beautiful. It's one of my all-time favorite covers. It is um, beautiful. Yeah. And this is my newest World War II novel. So uh, I'm really excited. It's starting a whole new series for me. Yay. So there'll be two more after this one coming out. Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, and this is from Gilead, right? Which is a relatively new publisher. So how's it been like working with them? I've really enjoyed working with Gilead. Um, it's, uh, like you said, they're very new. And so they're very small, uh-huh. which is great because I get to know everybody in the company. I think I know just about everybody, I've met just about everybody in the company, which is a lot of fun. And so it really feels like a family, it's that kind of family atmosphere. And I also like that they're right here in the Midwest so that I've been able to go down to Gilead's offices in Chicago and um, meet with them and, and get to really work Face to face together. The computer and all that is great and wonderful, but there's just no substitute for sitting down with people when you're brainstorming things, especially. So, oh, I think that's fun. That's great. Yeah. yeah wow. Wow. So, um, tell us about the series then. Are they going to be a connected? Uh, well, we want to hear about the book itself, this specific story, and then tell us about the series. Okay. The Melody of the Soul is set in Czechoslovakia during the Second World War, and it's about a Jewish Christian woman who uh, had been a concert violinist, but when the Nazis came in, they closed down all of that, didn't allow the um, Jews to participate in any musical activities or anything like that. In fact, they passed laws that required them to turn their instruments in. But Anna just can't live without her music and without her violin. It's it's what sustains her during these difficult days. And so she secretly keeps her violin. The problem comes when a Nazi officer is billeted in the flat below them. And he hears her playing. And um, then it's fun to see what happens from there on out. It ends up that he loves her music. And he's sort of fed up with the Nazi ideology and her music soothes his troubled soul. And when it comes time for Anna and her grandmother to be deported to the camps, he has to try to figure out a way to save the music. Oh, wow, I love that, I love that. And so now will the next uh, books in the series be different characters or what's what's your unifying theme for the series the unifying theme the whole series is entitled the music of hope that's what ties them all together we won't meet these characters again which i'm kind of in a way sad about i wanted i love them so much i wanted to keep writing about them but i had really told their story and it was time to move on so the next book which is due out in august is called when the heart sings and it's set in a Polish labor camp. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is that yes, three million Polish Jews were killed during the war, but three million Polish Christians were also killed during the war in labor camps. And so this book sort of explores that a little bit. And then the third book, which I have just started to write, and it comes out next year sometime, um, is set in Hungary on the hung- Hungarian-Romanian border during the war. And it's the smuggling of the Jews out of the country of Hungary in 1944. Oh, wow, wow. So what, as you're doing your research for all of these, have you been able to travel over to your, and, and this, just to back up a little bit, this is not your first World War 
two series. You have the first set and there were three or four books in it as well, correct? There were three books in that one, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. And that was the Women of Courage series. And right, yeah, I, I love to look at different countries. So that was the Netherlands, uh, Germany, and the Philippines. Um, and, but no, unfortunately, the only country that I've actually traveled to where any of my books have been set has been the Philippines. Oh, really? Any of the other countries, although um, my family is from the Netherlands, so I would, I would love to go there someday. And learning about Prague and just what a beautiful, beautiful city it is. And it did not, was not bombed during the war. So the gorgeous architecture still survives to this day. Um, I, I'm just dying to go to Prague now. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be so cool to be able to do all that, all the traveling that we want to do as we research our books. Okay, so we were talking about traveling and um, and how much fun that would be to travel for for the research for our books, and it's just not always possible. But I'm also interested in in the music and that whole aspect of it too. Are you musically inclined yourself? What draws you into to wanting to have music be such an important theme of your of this of the series i just i do i love music i love listening to music and to all kinds of different music so there's usually music on in the house except for when i'm working then i need complete silence oh do you <laughs> i do i can't i can't have any noise going on at all no. but as soon as i'm done the music goes on and um i i listen to all different kinds of genres of music and i played piano i took piano lessons for oh eight or nine years and i'm just not um multi I can't multitask enough to be able to play both hands. That's just a lot of notes for me to look at. So in junior high, I started playing the clarinet and that's a lot easier, one line of notes to, <laughs> to look at. And I, still, I still play the clarinet in our church um, orchestra. So that's been nice to keep me in that. But I just, I, music serves so many purposes in our lives. I mean, we use it to praise God with, and I think he uses it to speak to our hearts also. And sometimes it's just fun to dance and move. And it's very good motivation. I always put on something with a good strong beat to so I can clean the house and, and things like that. So um, music is a big part of my life. And um, when I was doing the research for the Melody of the Soul, what inspired me was reading the story of Alice Hurt Summer, who had been a concert pianist in Prague before the war. And she was the oldest living Holocaust survivor. She died several years ago at the age of 110. And they interviewed her um, shortly before her death. And she talked about how important music was in her survival and how it kept them going and gave them a reason to keep living despite the terrible conditions in the camp and she called music her savior oh wow and in a way i can understand what she was saying because it can be very important but my first thought was no music was not your savior and it's sort of what sparks the idea for the book yeah wow wow that's that's so cool though so interesting Okay, well, also, in addition, you also write prairie romances, uh, mostly for Barber, because they do these wonderful novella collections. And I remember we talked once before about your um, circus story. I think at the time it hadn't come out yet, and you were doing a lot of the research for that. But tell us, a, you know, a little bit about writing about that novella collection and about the specific story you wrote, because I thought that was so interesting. <laughs> Yeah, that one came out um, a little over a year ago in Madison for Rails to Love novella collection. Rails to Love. Rails to Love. And a train plays a part in each of the nine different stories in there by nine different authors. But yes, um, they had sent out, my agent had sent out a, a 
an email saying that Barbara wanted to do this collection and they were looking for authors and did I want to be a part of it, which I jumped at the idea of doing. I couldn't come up with a story with a train in it anyway. And each time I thought I had an idea, um, all the other ladies in the collection were posting, oh, I'm going to do this idea. I'm going to do this. Like, oh, no, that's what I had come up with. So I was really stuck. And I asked my um, family at dinner if they had any ideas. And they just got wild and crazy. And we didn't come up with anything until my husband went upstairs to put our daughter to bed. And all of a sudden, he yelled down the stairs, circus train. And I'm like, oh, of course, because here in Wisconsin is where the Ringling Brothers started their circus. And the circus train is big here. Uh, when I was younger, the train would come every year from Baraboo um, to Milwaukee. And it's about two out, hour and a half, two hours by car. Um, but it would take a full day for the train to get here. And they'd have a big circus parade. And so circus trains are huge here in Wisconsin. And the circus is big business here. So it just was a natural fit. And it was so much fun to be able to actually go to the Ringling Brothers headquarters and um, actually look at the actual log books from 1896. Oh my gosh, you actually looked at log books? I looked at log books. Yeah. They went every day where they were, what the water was like, um, what the ticket sales yeah. were like, and anything interesting that happened. Some of what happened in the book really actually happened and came from the log book we read. That is so cool. What a treasure too. I mean, it, it's yeah. such an interesting thing as, as well. So um, what do you think you, uh, this is like asking what's your favorite child, I know, but what do you like writing best? Do you like writing the, the three romances or the World War II stories? And my real passion where I pour myself into is my World War II book. Yeah. I have to tell you, I finished yeah. writing the World War II book and I'm exhausted. I, I just have to take a week or so off because it's so emotionally draining. Mm -hmm. I'm so invested in the stories. But that's why it, then it's fun to take a break and write a prairie romance because <laughs> it's so much lighter. It's like a, I can take a deep breath and <laughs> have a little bit of fun, a little less serious topic and so that's um that's really why I like to sort of intersperse both with my World War II books because as for me as an author it's just a little bit of a break and something yeah, yeah. yeah. and I actually I'm um, gonna show you this oh, one nice. mail order brides oh yay is that new to one releasing February 1st oh my gosh so we get to see an early copy of it that's great yeah. that is yeah. great so again, Barbara did a wonderful job with a beautiful cover. And if you get the physical copy, it has the ragged. I love that. And the flaps on the pictures on the inside. Oh my gosh. So they've done a great job with that. Sometimes it's worth it to get the physical copy. They do a gorgeous job. Yeah. And mail order brides still are very popular, even though they've been done a lot yeah and, uh, how many authors are in that collection there are nine in this nine. Yeah. so how hard was it coming up with a different kind of idea for that because like you said now mail order brides is like big yeah yeah uh, it was i and because it's been done so much i yeah. really wanted to do something really different exactly and, I did some research on why women would want to be mail order brides and found out that after the Civil War, uh, so many Southern women especially were left widows. Um, and, I, you know, after the Union troops had been through, so many of them had lost everything, their homes, their crops, everything was wiped out and they had nothing left in the South for them anymore. But the Texas cotton fields uh, was just, really starting to boom and a lot of um, Confederate veterans went there to start over planting cotton. Mm -hmm. And so these widows would go out and mar marry these Confederate veterans in Texas and live on the cotton plantations there. Oh, wow. I took that idea and then I melded it with um, Cinderella. So it's a Cinderella as a male 
Texas mail order bride. <laughs> oh my gosh, well that's different. I had a ton of fun. Yeah. So it's called Fairy Tale Bride. Oh my gosh. Wow. wow. Been on Cinderella. So I think it'll be a lot of fun for people to read. It sounds like, well, this is fun. You're starting out 2018 really great with the release of your first World War II book and your new series. And now with the, the new um, novella collection coming out in just a couple weeks, that's fabulous. Fabulous. Now, besides writing, I, I know a couple other things you do. Uh, Liz and I both write for Midwest Almanac, which is a blog that, a website we have posts usually about three times a week or two times a week plus plus a photo and what we call midwest snapshot we do that with two other women and it's really cool we just like to write about the midwest since we're all either from the midwest or you know we write stories set in the midwest um and then you write for another blog called is it penciledancer.com did i get that right right that's right and that's a blog for writers mm -hmm. we offer encouragement and tips and Lots of fun things for writers over there. That's, yeah, that's great. And you're, uh, you live in Wisconsin. You're a mom of three children, all who have been adopted from three different countries. So do you mind telling us a little bit about that, about how you got involved in international adoption and about your, and about your wonderful family? Yeah, um, like you mentioned, all three of our children um, were adopted from Asian countries. We have a son who will be, I don't know, maybe I'm get, he's getting old enough that I don't want to. <laughs> I know. I, my kids are like that too, and it's like I have to think about like, how old. But he's going to be 23 in a few weeks. Oh. And, yeah, we adopted him from Vietnam when he was five months old. So that was um, an amazing experience. We got to go to Vietnam 22 years ago and bring him home. And then we have a, an 18 year old daughter who uh, we brought home from Korea when she was three months old. Wow. And then our youngest, uh, we traveled to the Philippines to adopt her when she was five years old. And she, uh, we call her our lifer because uh, she will live with us for the rest of her life or our life. Um, she has a host of physical and, and cognitive delays, but she is a joy and a pleasure, and her aim in life is to make you laugh. And she, she does that pretty much on a daily basis. So, oh, that's so great. I mean, yeah, what wonderful experiences! It sure is. Yeah, you know, um, the Lord just led us to um, to international adoption. It just felt like a right the right fit for us, and. You know, I said our first two adoptions really were because we couldn't have children, but then we just saw what a wonderful way it is to build a family, and we've become very passionate about adoption, about older child adoption, about special needs adoption. Good, good, good. And you speak, is that one of the topics you speak about, or, or what are some, what, what do you speak about? Um, yeah, I speak on adoption, I speak on marriage, um, I had put together a speech uh, about my first World War II series, which was called Women of Courage. So that topic was living with courage, and I've given that speech quite a number of times. Oh, cool. And it's always fun to speak about. And I, I speak on ri different writing topics also, so I speak to writing groups. In fact, I'm going to be the keynote speaker for the Southern California for SoCal a Christian Writers Conference in June. Yay, well congrats. Thank you. Yeah. I'm very excited to go out there and get to do that. And I also do custom um, speeches. So if anybody wants to contact me and says, hey, this is our group and this is the theme of it, I can work with it. Oh, great, that's great. Well, that's wonderful. Sounds like things are just really going so well for you. I'm so excited. That's Thanks. Yeah, the Lord is really blessing yeah. what I'm doing, and it's 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 been hard. I have four books releasing this year, so last year I just did nothing but write, write, write. But uh, you know, as an author, when it rains, it pours, and exactly. then you have your drought time, so you grab your chances when you have them. <laughs> when those contracts come, you say, "Okay," and you just work it out. You do that. <laughs> 
That's so cool. Well, Liz, this has been so great, and, and thank you. Um, we've, we've had a few little glitches behind the scenes. I don't know how much you all are watching this are going to be able to tell, but um, this has just been, been so fun to connect with you again. Liz and I have known each other for quite a while, but we've, we've met once at American Christian Fiction Writers Conference, I think, in da uh, Dallas a couple years ago. Is that where we were? I don't know where it was. I can't remember which one it was, but yeah. Wait, was it, were you in Nashville? Were you in I Nashville? was in Nashville. I think it was Nashville. It was, in that, it was at the Nashville conference. So we got to, to talk there. And like I said, we do, you know, we, we blog together and we both are big World War II fans and love that era and love the research and all that kind of thing. So this has just been, been really a lot of fun. So my, my final question is when it's all done, you've hit the end, um, what do you do to unwind? Um, I like to, uh, when it's not winter time, <laughs> now, I like to go out and work in my, my garden. Yeah. Um, the other day it was in the 40s, and I was like, wow. I just want to get my hands on the ground, but it was still frozen, so of course. Because wow. you have a perennial garden, and you know, actually, I meant to ask about that too, because um, because it just sounded so cool. I, I saw on your website where you do perennial gardening. So what exactly does that mean? Are you just, you have just flowers everywhere? I have a huge area um, that's a garden. My husband and I have been working on it all the 18 years that we've been living in this house. My dad got us into perennial gardening. He's a huge perennial gardener. So I grow things that come back year to year to year. I have peonies and roses and cone flowers and day lilies and pretty much any um, perennial that you can think of yeah. that survives these cold winters. I probably have it in my yard. Oh, that's so cool. That is very, very cool. Okay, well, that wraps up another um, episode of Novels Unwind. Again, I want to thank Liz Tolsma for being our special guest and just congratulate her on the release of The Melody of the Soul. Do you have that again you can show us? And, um, yes, I do. It's still on the floor. Hang on. Oh. <laughs> There we go. Beautiful cover. And um, you'll want to get that. I've read one of Liz's first World War II stories. I know she's an excellent writer. So it's just a, a pleasure to recommend her. And, you know, I consider her a friend. So that's cool, too. So until next time, thanks for joining us. This is Johnny Alexander. Bye-bye.